Welcome to a new video on my home automation channel and today I'm reviewing a new product from a new supplier which is Maker Fabs and this is their ESP32 audio player and actually this is two separate products as you can see there is an ESP32 development board with an OLED uh, screen and there is this audio extension board which has I'm assuming the amplifier circuitry also there is a micro SD card slot and a couple of buttons and we also have a headphone jack. So this is called the Make Python Audio version 2. And the main board is also called Make Python. So it's Make Python ESP32. This is version 1.1. If you pause the video, you can see the pinouts there. If you look at the MakerFabs website, you can see that they already have a couple of projects uh, that you can download and use this uh, product straight away. So there is an alarm clock, there is a text-to-speech, weather forecast, a web radio. But I actually had a particular application in mind for this, uh, this product because I wanted to build my own, uh, let's say, smart speaker. So I do have a couple of, um, you know, Google Homes around my house, well, actually only two. And I thought I would like to have something similar in my kid's bedroom, but I don't need a microphone. All I want is I want a device which can play audio. So the idea is that in my Node-RED server, I can uh, create audio files based on, you know, com uh, for example, converting text to speech or, or just use some pre-recorded MP3s. And I can send these MP3s to these devices and it will play in the room. So, for example, I can have announcements that maybe there is someone at the door or, you know, the dinner is ready or use it as an alarm clock but then have a customized alarm which tells uh, what is the date what is uh, you know maybe the you know the weather forecast or something like that so it's like a you know a smart speaker without the microphone listening part of it and i realized that this hardware is ideal for that so what i'm going to be talking in this video is um, actually i'm going to be talking the, the program that i've built and this is based on the maker fabs web radio example so i just took that example i kept pretty much the whole you know the web radio functionality um, i used the buttons and the same way as they defined it i've also rewritten the program to use a different user interface designed a couple of icons uh, put the whole thing into MQTT so you can control the volume, you can start and stop the radio station uh, based on MQTT messages and also in MQTT you can send this device a URL which points to an MP3 file which is on my Raspberry Pi let's say and it's going to play that, uh, that MP3. So as I said Node-RED is going to auto generate these MP3 files based on some sort of speech and that's what gets played on the device. This project is not complete yet. I still would like to work on the UI a little bit. I also want to enhance the hardware. I want to just understand a little bit more which are the pins that are not used in this ESP. So maybe I can add an additional environment sensor to it. Maybe also some lights. Besides the audio, maybe there could be some uh, visual alerts as well on this device. But of course, all these additional features will be covered in a future video. And since we are here, I just wanted to give you a very quick demo. I'm using this uh, speaker, which is probably like an old media, computer media speaker. This is an 8 ohm one. It's going to be fairly quiet. I think if you want to use this module without an extra amplifier, you'll probably need to use like a 4 ohm speaker because uh, that the, you know, the sound is going to be better. But uh, probably at the end, I would just add a small amp to this uh, setup. So I'm just going to plug this in and I'm going to use a USB power supply, plug in the USB. I've designed a splash screen and that's the, you know, the radio. So it has a list of predefined radio stations and I can change between the stations using this rocker switch. So by the way, this is a kind of switch that you can push uh, two ways, you know, left to right and also push it in. So this is how you change between stations. And as you can see, the screen gets updated. It shows you what station you are. It also has a timer, like how long you are listening to that station. You have a Wi-Fi signal strength. You have a volume as well. So as I start lowering the volume, you can see that the icon on the top updates and it also shows you the time. And there is this nice animation on the radio as well. 
So as you can hear, this is the full volume using this uh, 8 ohm speaker. It definitely works. I don't want to listen too much because otherwise it's going to hit the, uh, you know, the YouTube content match. And if you press on the middle button, okay, there is a little bit of bug here, then it stops the audio and it turns it into a clock. So it's going to show the time. So that's going to be some sort of like, you know, standby mode for this device. And the time is automatically getting updated from an NTP server. So you don't have to do anything about that. You just power it up. And then once it connects the internet, it will get the uh, time and date. And that's the functionality that I have and this is how far I've gotten so far. I've already received this device probably like a week ago, so I hadn't had an awful lot of time to, you know, fine tune this application. But as you can see, most of the stuff is working already. And of course, the last functionality is that it can play those announcements that are coming over MQTT. So I'm going to head over to my computer. I'm going to show you how that works. First, let me show you how the MQTT Parks works in Node-RED. So I have a few um, MQTT in and MQTT out set up. So these are the functions that are supported at the moment. So most probably is going to be enhanced in the future. First of all, there is a status topic. Um, I mean, this is something that I usually do with all of my devices that every minute it publishes some status. So what is the uptime and what is the current RSSI, which you can also see on the screen. So to get, that gets pushed to this topic every minute in a JSON format. So this is just the, you know, the device uh, announcing that he is still working and alive. And also we have three separate topic where you can control what radio station gets played, what should be the volume and what is the announcement part. So the first of all, let me talk about the volume. This is the easiest one. I've configured this to the MQTT radio slash volume topic and you just send in the numbers. The number can be anywhere between zero and 21. So zero is the lowest volume. Let's say, you know, 15 is a higher volume and 21 is the full volume. As I said, on this small speaker, this is quite, still quite loud and I'm uh, listening to a classical music at the moment, which is again, it's uh, less loud. So let me just lower the volume so we don't hit a content match on YouTube. And you can also change the station. And so that's the slash radio topic. And here to this topic, you also send in a number between zero and the number of stations uh, configured minus one. So the first station is zero and the second station is going to be one. And uh, that it immediately changes the station. Of course, you still have access to all the physical buttons, so you can so you can change these uh, settings with the physical buttons all, all the time. If you are playing around with the physical buttons at the moment, the device is not sending any updates back to you, saying that the setting was changed on the device. But uh, probably this is something which is coming in the future in the status message as well. And finally, let me talk about those announcements. So there is a slash play topic, and to that you can send in a URL. And you send in the URL without the HTTP colon slash slash part. So for example, for me, this is my IP of my Raspberry Pi, which is running Node-RED. But besides Node-RED, it's also running Apache uh, web server on port 8080. And I've uh, copied an MP3 file to that folder. I'm, and the reason I'm using the Apache web server and not the Node-RED uh, server or the Node-RED UI, because uh, I have the user ID and password authentication on the UI. So if I copy everything to the Node-RED, it would ask for a user ID and a password. So nothing gets played on the device. So this is why I'm using the Apache, which, you know, I just access it straight away. And by the way, if anything goes wrong, just look at the serial log. For example, the issue about the username and password login where uh, I just mentioned before, I realized that by looking at the logs and it was clearly stating that and it was not able to access that MP because of the user and the end the password issue. So just, you know, look at the logs, the, you know, the serial log uh, and you will find information on, you know, what the device is doing, if it has any issues. And you can also see messages about the MQTT. So, uh, so for example, I just changed the volume to one and you can see that the volume, you know, changes here. It also shows you that the status message just, just got sent. And then finally, let me show you the announcements. So I have one MP3. Well, it is going to be in Hungarian, so you aren't going to understand a lot. But this is uh, me trying to create an audio file, well, actually a speech file based on a Hungarian sentence. And I'm actually using Google Text-to-Speech, which is in Hungarian. It's not really good. I mean, it's not 
as nice and you know fluent as in English but uh, well maybe they are going to enhance it in the future so I send in a message to the mp3 and it gets played if you can hear it and as you can see on the screen the icon changes to this uh, basically this you know sort of loudspeaker animation so it gives you also visual feedback that now an announcement is being played and actually when it finishes playing it should change back to the to the previous mode that it was so it was if if it's on mute say it was showing the, the time it will go back to the time screen if it was showing a web radio station it's going to go back to the web radio and i think this is quite a long no 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 it's actually finished as you can see now it's back and playing the audio station so let's look at the code now and i've already um, you know looking at the serial monitor in arduino id and but you can find my code in my github and i put the i'm going to put the link in the video description and actually call this the mqdt speaker because mainly it is going to be some sort of speaker not so much as a web radio i think it will be more used as a sort of like an announcement device than a web radio but let's see if i look at the description um, i have included a section it talks about the libraries that are required to compile the sketch so i need a time library because i'm using the ntp functionality and time calculation so that's available in the audio arduino library manager i need a sun moon calculation which you can download from here actually this is something that i've included because i pulled the example from one of my other projects i'm not using the sunrise and the sunset functionality at the moment but probably that would be included in the future release and you also need the esp32 audio i2s which you can download from this link and of course you need some of the basic libraries your Arduino ID has to be set up for ESP32. We need the pop sub library for the MQTT, or we also need Adafruit gra graphics library for the OLED screen. But hopefully you have those if you have worked on any similar projects. And there is one thing that you have to remember is when you are flashing a new firmware, you have to push this um, station selector button towards the audio jack and you have to keep it pressed throughout the firmware update process and this is something special about this board i'm not really sure maybe this is gpio zero but usually you don't have to keep it pressed but anyway this is how it works you just have to remember that if you don't do this you would get an error message when you are trying to update the firmware anyway i don't want to go into a great details in terms of how the code works i think i've left enough description in the code and probably half of the code is the examples that i pulled from the maker fabs example anyway obviously i've added the pieces around the ntp functionality the whole mqtt functionality the new screen routines i have a bunch of icons that you can see on the screen so the frames of this various animation um, and the different icons and the new background screen and the sl a splash screen the only thing you really need to take care about is in the settings.h file so everything that you need to change i put into this separate settings.h so you don't even have to bother with any of the other files well except as i mentioned here in the first line the ntp.h so let's look at the settings.h first and here on the top you see all the settings uh, that are required for the MQTT and the Wi-Fi. So you have the Wi-Fi, SSID and the password. You have the MQTT server details. And you have the four topics that the device is going to use. So as I said, the, to publish the status to the status topic, change the volume, change the radio station and play an external MP3 file. And the next set of configuration options that you have here is the different stations the example sketch came with a list of uh, stations and i've changed the first two stations to well two hungarian local stations so you probably want to change that and actually i also changed the third one to one of the test announcements so that again is pointing to an mp3 on my local server so you won't be able to use that so definitely replace these three examples with something else that works for you and I've also added a second array which is going to contain the station names. So in the OLED display, I'm displaying the station name rather than the URLs. So you have a second array where you maintain you know, the station names and just please make sure that you have the same number of uh, entries 
in the stations as you have in the station names otherwise your ESP is might going to fall over I could have converted it to some sort of structure but well I didn't and as I said in order to make sure that the NTP functionality works you have the latitude and the longitude which again that would be required for the sunrise and the sunset calculation what is probably more important is the GMT offset so that is the number of minutes that you are either ahead or behind the GMT so because I'm in Central Europe that's CT so that's GMT plus one hour so for me that's 60 and once you have done these changes you can just compile the sketch and upload it to the ESP I'm using these settings so the board is ESP32 I'm using the highest upload uh, uh, rate the CPU frequency is 240 the flash is set to 80 megahertz and the flash mode is QIO flash size 4 megabytes and well the rest is just the, the you know default and I think the PS RAM is disabled by default and of course the comport might be different in your system but that's that's pretty much it this is all you need to do to get the same exact functionality and the hardware is already given so all you need is a speaker and the three and a half millimeter jack connection thanks for watching and see you in the next video